Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today for our virtual wild encounter. I am Jenny and I am here with a very special small friend. This is Millie the Giant African Millipede. Now being a giant African millipede, she is of course a little bit larger than most millipedes you would see around here, but um, he actually is not a fully grown animal. These guys can get up to a foot long and he's not quite there yet. Uh, millipedes, I think, are really cool animals. They're really important to the environment because they are what we call detritivores. So an omnivore is an animal that eats a bit of everything, an herbivore eats plants. Uh, detritivore means decaying plant matter. So he does eat a lot of decaying plants. Doesn't sound super appetizing to most of us, but it's really, really important for the forest ecosystem. Someone has to be able to be there to clean up all of that decaying plant matter. Now these guys obviously are very well known for their legs. They have many, many legs. The name millipede does mean 1,000 legs, but that's a bit of an exaggeration. And they have generally between two and 400 legs. The reason we don't know exactly how many he has is they actually gain new legs throughout their life. So every time that they molt, and they do molt like a snake or another kind of reptile, they do completely shed their skin, they will also grow new legs um, and new body segments. These guys have some other really cool adaptations. They do have eyes. You probably won't be able to see them. They are very small and they are very simple eyes, but they mostly get around by feeling. You can probably see those two antennae there on the front. Um, they get around by touch. They also smell very well and taste very well, and that's a large part of how they navigate around their world. They can actually smell and taste with all parts of their body. They have this really long body and it does have um, sensory organs throughout. It does also have um, spiracles. This is how they breathe. They have spiracles all down their body. They are really important animals, like I said. You will find some in North America. Uh, the biggest one here is the North American giant millipede. Not nearly as big as Millie and not nearly as big as Millie will get. Um, they only get up to about four inches, but that still can look pretty big to you if you're not used to seeing a big millipede around. All right, Jenny, are you ready for some questions? I am ready for some questions. Uh, Duncan, age 10, wants to know if it tickles when Millie walks across your hand. Uh, that's a great question. It does kind of tickle. She does have a pretty strong grip with her little legs there, so it does tickle a little bit. And Myla, age six, wants to know if they bite. So they do not usually bite. Um, of course, they do bite their food, but they don't usually bite predators or animals that they feel threatened by. Um, instead, they will coil up into a ball. So they do have this hard exoskeleton, and it helps to protect them when they curl up into a ball. They also will emit sometimes a liquid. It's kind of a noxious liquid that's toxic to animals. So most of the time, a predator, if they see one curled up, emitting that foul-smelling liquid, will just choose to leave them alone. Well, let's see. We've got Mallory, 10 years old. How can you tell a millipede from a centipede? That is a great question. So millipedes definitely are my favorite of the two. Centipedes, they do have fewer legs, um, and they don't have the same kind of body structure as these guys. They don't have this rounded shape with the very hard protective exoskeleton. The biggest difference, though, is that um, centipedes are venomous, and they are carnivores. So centipedes hunt their prey, and they are the ones that you have to look out for. They can bite, and they do have venom, so it wouldn't be super harmful to a person, um, but it would definitely hurt. Well, Lily, age six, and Clara, age four, how okay. old is Millie? Millie is a little under two years old. Lila wants to know, is it a bug? So that's a good question. Bug is not the most scientific word, so you could definitely call this animal a bug. Um, you would not call him an insect. Insects are animals that do have six legs. Um, you would not call him an arachnid because those are bugs that have eight legs. This is just a different kind. Um, we can call them an arthropod. That's a fancy word for them. That's just about any kind of bug you can think of is a type of arthropod. And they are all what we would call invertebrates. There are two main kinds of animals in the world, vertebrates, and that's us, and invertebrates, which are animals like this, um, any kind of bug you might think of, as well as cephalopods, like an octopus or a cuttlefish. 
with another question here. Gates at age 11, he wants to know if you can keep them as pets. So you can keep them as pets, and some people do, um, especially the giant African millipede is kind of popular in the pet trade right now because they are so cool and they do get so big, so they're good animals to kind of show off, but they're not the easiest animals to keep. So they do have a very specific diet. They eat decaying plants, of course, but um, in the captivity we tend to give them a large mix of different vegetables and fruits and we have to make sure that they have just the right kind of moisture because they do live on the forest floor. There's a lot of moisture there and if you get it wrong, it can be really hard to keep them alive for a long time. They also do breathe throughout their whole body with their spiracles, so if you get it too wet, they can actually drown just from being too wet. We have Kate at age five and she wants to know, does Millie have any friends? Hi Kate, so no she doesn't have any friends here, she doesn't live with other millipedes because millipedes are solitary animals. The only time that they will see other millipedes is when they are mating. In fact, when millipedes are born, they are born completely independent, so they will never ever meet their parents. They're born just ready to go out into the world. And Christy wants to know, are they all the same color? Oh, I apologize, it's for rumor and four years old. Oh, hi. So they are not all the same color. Um, giant African millipedes are this like black, black and brown color, um, but there are different colored millipedes throughout the world. Some are some very bright colors, which is a good indication to some animals that they're toxic. Um, bright colors can be a way of animals to communicate in their toxic in the animal world. Um, but yeah, the ones that are popular in the U.S., the big giant North American millipedes are black and red most of the time. And Emily, age six, wants to know, do they lay eggs? They do lay eggs. That is a great question. They lay hundreds of eggs at one time. And those eggs will incubate or stay nice and warm before they hatch for about uh, three months. I actually did not know that myself. Let's see, you got a lot of it's a little boy and what is Millie? Do you want to give one more introduction to who you have with you today, Jenny? Yeah, for those of you just tuning in, this is Millie and he is a two-year-old giant African millipede. This is a species that can get up to about one foot long, so he still does have some growing to do, but this is the largest species of millipede in the world. That is so cool. Uh, Miss Erica, I do see your question there. The zoo is not open at this time. I'll be happy to send you a private message from our PR team after this broadcast. Oh, okay, we have Jay in Alabama. Oh, hi, thanks for joining us. How big are they when they're born? So when they're born, they are very, very small, um, probably I'd say less than an inch, and they are completely pale in color when they're born, and they just have three body segments. They have two pairs of legs for each body segment, um, and yeah, they are born really small, and they molt several times when they are first born, and they grow pretty quickly that way. That's kind of an interesting one, too. Uh, Lila, also in Alabama. How do you know if it is a boy or a girl? That's a great question. So it is very hard to tell just from looking at them. You probably won't be able to see on this camera here. I don't think so. Um, but the seventh little body segment, one of the pairs of legs is modified into a very special pair of legs um, called gonopods. And that is only something that male millipedes have. It's used during mating. And I don't know if you'll be able to answer this one, Jenny, but Samuel at age six wants to know how many of those stripes does she have, or the ridges on her back, I think is what they're referring to. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know exactly how many she has because um, if you were here earlier and heard, she does uh, grow new body segments every time she molts. So we have not counted recently, but some millipedes can have up to 100 of them or sometimes 200. And... Uh, Lily Six and Claire Four, how old is Millie? Millie is just a little bit under two years old. They can grow up to be about five to seven years. All right, and we wanna know, we have someone asking, how fast can they run? So this is about as fast as he goes. They do not go very quickly. Um, they don't really have to go very quickly because they don't chase prey. They do just eat decaying plants and they don't run away from their predators since they do just coil up and try to stay safe like that. So this is as fast as they will go. You might be able to see here on this camera, the way that they move their legs is really, really cool in my opinion. They move them kind of in a wave formation. So they're not moving one leg at a time, they're moving them like a giant wave. 
I have to tell you guys, one of the reasons that I think these are the coolest animals is that they are actually pretty close to the very first animals that ever lived on land. So about 450 million years ago, the first millipedes existed and they colonized the land. And about two to 400 million years ago, the biggest one of these guys got up to over six and a half feet long. So Millie is the biggest one that you can find now, but they one at one point were six and a half feet long, which is pretty crazy to think about. Well, these questions are coming in fast. Uh, Sarah Blake, 10 years old, all the way from Indiana. Hi. Wants to know if Millie's nocturnal. Millie is nocturnal. It's a great question. Um, of course, she spends most of her time on the forest floor, and she'll spend actually most of her time in uh, rotting logs or rotting leaves, so they won't generally see a lot of sunlight either way. Oh, and Aubrey at three, uh, all the way in Arkansas, they're just joining in. She wants to know if she can bite, or if I'm wondering if she's wondering if she's going to bite you while she's walking across your hand there. Yeah, so they don't really bite um, if they felt threatened, and we know she doesn't feel threatened because if she were threatened, she would be curled up into a ball. Um, yeah, they will sometimes release a toxic substance, but they will not bite. So there's really nothing to fear from these guys. All right, hold on. I'm just switching my other camera there. <coughs> okay, we've got a lot of questions about legs, Jenny, just about how many do they have, why they have so many, and how do they keep up with all those legs? Yes, those are great questions. So we don't know exactly how many Millie has right now. It is pretty hard to count them all at once when they are all moving, and they don't have the same number of legs throughout their life. So whenever they molt, they completely shed their skin and they grow new body segments. So they have four legs on each body segment, up to about 400 at the max. I think he probably has more about two to 300 right now. But yeah, it is actually um, a really cool way for them to move around. And like I said, if you were here a little bit earlier, they are one of the very first animals to ever live on land. So there's a good chance that a lot of animals that are around with fewer than this many legs actually evolved from animals that had this many legs. We have a question from Lily and Clara. Again, they want to know hey what eats the millipedes. That's a great question. So a lot of animals will leave them alone because again, they are kind of hard to get to when they curl up into their balls and release that toxic fluid. But there are some animals that are specifically adapted to work around these measures. So one is the kawadi. The kawadi will actually roll this animal around on the ground until they emit all of that noxious fluid. And once they're done with that, then the kawadi will eat them. Um, the same applies to meerkats. Meerkats do that sometimes too. And if you saw our virtual wild encounter yesterday with Matt, the Savannah monitor, he also has that adaptation. So we're gonna switch views on here for you guys as we ask, do they have eyes? So they do have eyes. Um, they have a very simple form of eyes called ocelli. So these can't see color. They probably don't see a lot of depth. Mostly they're just to sense light and dark. So yeah, they mostly get around through feeling with their antenna and through taste and smell. And if you weren't here earlier, I did say that Millie can actually taste and smell with all of the different parts of his body, which is a really cool adaptation. And Kaden, age 10, do they put out an odor when they are trying to defend themselves? Yeah, so when they do release that toxic liquid, when they are feeling threatened, it does smell pretty bad. It's what we'd call a noxious uh, liquid. And Holly is asking, is that the only one we have here at the zoo? This is the only one we have here at the zoo right now. And, and she is actually um, an ambassador animal. So our ambassador animals live behind the scenes and they come on special encounters to meet people and represent their species in opportunities like this. All right, we got Cheyenne, age 12. How long will Millie live? So Millie could live anywhere up to five to seven years. Uh, seven years is about the max that an animal like this will live under human care. They would not live quite as long in the wild because again, they do have those predators that are adapted to eat them in the wild. Uh, CJ, once at age eight, would like to know, does Millie have a favorite food? So Millie likes a variety of food. Um, I would say probably his favorite is vegetables. Um, so he eats some kale sometimes, we chop up some greens, uh, some cucumber slices, probably cucumber is one of his favorites. 
I'm seeing lots of questions pop in here. I think we've answered this one before, but it's worth touching again. Uh, Jada H10 wants to know, do they shed their skin? So they do, they do call what, um, do, they do what we call molting. Um, and all animals like this, all arthropods, will molt all of their skin. So basically, they wriggle themselves out of their skin and leave behind what looks like an exact replica of themselves, but it's just their outer layer of skin. And we're getting a lot of questions again about uh, legs. You want to give another little quick tutorial about why they have so many legs, how many legs do they have, and of course, more about that fun wave motion we're seeing while she's walking. Right, so these guys have anywhere from two to 400 legs. And if you weren't here earlier, I did actually say that these guys, we don't know how many legs they have at one time because they gain legs throughout their life. So every time that they do molt, they gain new body segments. Each little body segment has four legs, two pairs of legs. And the, I believe the millipede with the most can have upwards of five or 600 legs, but the most a giant African millipede will have is about 400. And Lila, age nine, wants to know, do they hibernate? So they do not generally hibernate, no, um, but a lot of arthropods like them can go into what we would call torpor, and that just means that if it's a little bit too cold outside for them, they can actually uh, basically slow down their body functioning to save on energy for a little while. Looks like our questions are slowing down here for just a second. Um, still getting a little questions on if it's a boy or girl and uh, what we're doing. So let's try that reintroduction one more time. Yeah, he is a boy. He is about two years old, and this is a giant African millipede. Um, he's definitely not full grown yet, so he will get up to about a foot long, possibly even a little bit longer than a foot when he is full grown. Um, the, the way we can tell them apart from females, it's pretty hard to tell and probably can't see it on this camera, but they do have a set of specialized legs on their seventh body segment called gonopods, and it's just males that have that. Other than that, there's really no way to tell them apart. Um, they are what we would call sexually monomorphic, meaning that the two genders have basically no outward characteristics showing that they're different other than those gonopods. Oh, and Jenny, this question is just for you. We have uh, Presley, age six. Hi, Presley. And he wants to know, do you like taking care of Millie? I do like taking care of Millie. Millie is a very fun animal to take care of. He does have a bit of a complicated care as compared to some other animals because he has to have a very specific amount of moisture in his habitat and he does like to eat decaying plants. So we have to make sure to get the right variety of plants like vegetables and fruits. But I think this is a really rewarding animal to take care of and I think that they're really personable for such a small animal and one that people don't tend to think of as very friendly since they are invertebrates. We have another one for you, Miss Jenny, from apparently future zookeepers. Oh, awesome. Duncan, age 10, and Phoebe, age 8. Hey, guys. They want to know what they can do to prepare for a future job at the zoo. That is a great question. So most zookeepers do have some kind of schooling in animal sciences. And this can be a number of things. I know people who have degrees in psychology. Um, definitely people have degrees in zoology and biology. But the number one thing I would say is to start getting out there as soon as possible. So when you are in high school, there are definitely volunteer opportunities at the zoo and at many zoos throughout the country. And when you're in college, you can do internships at zoos. And those are the best ways to get your foot in the field. And just so everyone knows that's watching, we do have an excellent volunteer program and internship. Just go to memphiszoo.org backslash volunteer. Oh, Emily and Benjamin want to know, how do they sense light and dark? Hey guys, so they do use um, their simple eyes that we do call ocelli. And that's pretty much their whole job is sensing light and dark. So our eyes sense light and dark, um, but they also, they see depth, they see color. Uh, his eyes really aren't adapted to do any of those things. So pretty much their number one job is just sensing if it's light or dark out. We're gonna switch back to our table camera here because okay. it uh, looks like one of our guests wants to know, can they lose a segment and still live? Um, I don't actually know. They could potentially lose a segment. Um, it definitely would not be very good for them to lose a segment, but they have organs throughout their whole body, so it, they might potentially be able to. Their heart actually runs throughout the entire length of their body, so if they lost a segment, um, there's a very good chance that their heart would be affected and it would be hard for them to survive. 
Oh, goodness. Well, Wyatt at age five wants to know how do they ball up? So um, you probably want to see him right now because he is feeling like going out and exploring. But if he felt threatened, he would very immediately start to coil up his body. They can do it very quickly. And they pretty much hide all of their legs in the center. And they just have this tough exoskeleton on the outside to protect them. Uh, Tina's asking how many babies are in their litter. So they can lay up to about 300 eggs at one time. And how many of those eggs will hatch? Um, there's probably a good chance that all 300 or, or most of the 300 will hatch, but when they are first born, they are very, very susceptible to predators because they are, you know, they've just been born. They are pale in color, so they're a little bit easier to see when they're first born. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how many will survive, but definitely not all 300 probably. Well, I do have a question for you, Jenny. What are those little antennae in front there? What are those doing? I see he's kind of moving them around a lot on your screen. Yeah, that helps him get around because, again, he can't see very well. So before he takes a step onto something, like if he's about to step onto one hand from the other hand, he will use the antenna to feel. And that way he knows that he's about to step onto a, a smooth surface instead of stepping out into the air. Okay. And uh, it's so funny, whenever my kids see something like this, they always ask, is that a big roly-poly? Is there any relation between our roly-polies here and Millie's? Yeah, so roly-polies um, and that kind of animal definitely probably evolved from some animals that are pretty similar to Millie here. They're not super closely related, but they are both arthropods. They're both invertebrates, and they do have some similar body segments. They do have those armored segments and will both roll up um, if they feel threatened to protect themselves. And Haley, age eight, wants to know more about their sleeping patterns. Uh, will they like to sleep during the day or at night? Yeah, so they would mostly sleep during the day. They are nocturnal animals. And again, they won't really come out very far from where they live. So they live basically in rotting logs or in the leaf litter on the forest floor. So even though they do come out mostly at night, even if they came out during the day, they live in some pretty dark places. Uh, looks like we got a little question from Caden, age 10. When they do lay their eggs, do they stay and take care of the litter? That's a great question. So um, there are actually a lot of invertebrates that do do that. Um, Millie is not one of them. Millipedes don't do that. They actually will bury their eggs and they will leave them there and they hatch after about three months. So those babies will never make contact with their parents and they are born fully independent and ready to start molting and live their lives. Esther, age eight, wants to know, do they come in different colors? They do come in different colors. So Millie here is a giant African millipede, and they're just brown and black like she is, or he is right here. Um, but there are some different species with some bright colors, and there are some species in the U.S., like the African, uh, sorry, the North American giant millipede that are black and red. And Caitlin and Ian want to know, do they live alone or groups in the wild? That's a great question. They do live alone. Um, they are solitary animals, and they spend most of their time, you know, like curled up and ready to go out and get decaying plant matter from their area. So there's really no reason that they would want to live with one another. The only time that they come together is when they are going to be mating. And I believe we maybe touched on this already, but Caden did want to know how long would they live in the wild and how long will they live here with us at the zoo? So we don't know exactly how long um, the average is in the wild. We just don't have a whole lot of data about that. Definitely not as long as they would here at the zoo though. In zoos, they tend to live anywhere between five to seven years. And of course, in the wild, they do have some natural predators. So there's a good chance that they might only live a couple of years out there. And in the wild, what is the purpose they serve to our little ecosystem? Yeah, so being detritivores and eating decaying plant matter, that's really something that's very important to the ecosystem. So if all of that decaying plant matter, like leaf litter and like rotting logs, just piled up and no one ate it, then the environment would start to fill with that and it would hurt the things that other animals need to live. So some animals can't eat decaying plant matter, they can only eat alive plants. And if our environment was just full of those decaying plants, then live plants would struggle to grow. Well guys, we are wrapping up here. Uh, Jenny, is there any other fun things we should know about Millie before saying goodbye? Uh, not that I'm sure of right now, but thank you guys so much for joining us today. It was great for Millie to be able to see everybody. All right, guys, if we didn't get your questions, we do apologize, but thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks, everyone.
Thank you for joining us for our virtual wild encounter. Make sure you check out our next one on Monday. Bye guys.